Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. And as many of you have noticed, we've, we've reached 10,000 subscribers, which as usual makes no sense whatsoever to me, but thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I haven't been very active in publishing uh, videos recently because with my uh, accident and broken back, it's been kind of difficult to motivate myself and I have to make do with the telescopes that I have currently installed. So refractor there and another refractor, but solar refractor here because I'm not allowed to lift anything that's heavier than two kilograms. So with that, um, one of my plans had been like for 10,000 subscribers to take an, a, a deep sky object uh, image with 10,000 subs or subframes, right? Uh, and maybe try like uh, in broadband 10,000 subframes of one second each, this kind of stuff, which should not give me anything like really. Um, but you know, we, we could try and it, it kind of would be fun. But the weather here has been terrible. It's consistently cloudy and r slash rainy at night. Um, and it, it does get better during the day, as you can tell right now, but it's not always the case. And so instead of doing DSO, I can take more than 10,000 uh, sub, uh, subframes with uh, just uh, my uh, solar telescope pointed on the sun. Hopefully there's some good features on the sun uh, today. And then I'll be using what, my uh, 174mm uh, camera to uh, take a video stream of that. And uh, that's pretty much it. And since I want to take my uh, subframe lengths to be less than 10 milliseconds or so to counteract the seeing and the atmospheric wobbling uh, that uh, will be visible, then you know I'll, I'll have uh, 10,000 frames in, in a couple of minutes on half exposures only. So that's gonna be good. So 10,000 subs, but kind of cheating. Uh, so I'm not gonna go through the whole process on camera because it is absolutely exhausting to be standing here. The sun is really bright. I'm really getting my share of vitamin D for the day, which is good for my bones, right? Um, so uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do, I'll do the, the actual uh, capture off, um, off camera because it is just so painful. And uh, I'll see you back inside, uh, maybe tonight, uh, we'll see, um, with some actual processing of that solar imaging data, see what we can get out of it. So uh, with that, see you tonight. Okay, and so now we are ready to process the image. I got in the end uh, three files. One is a dark frame file, basically one is a flat frame frame. Flip. One is a flat frame file and the last one is the actual uh, imaging file. So I'm going to use a piece of software called AutoStacker to stack all of that. And here it is. I'm going to start well by opening the dark frame. Here it is. It just basically is uh, 500 exposures that I took in a video file with the same uh, exposure time and gain settings as, um, as my light frames. And I took them with the cap of the telescope on, except that it was not the cap because the cap is made of metal and it's black. And I had left it all in the sun and when I touched it, I almost burned myself. So I used the blanket instead, uh, but whatever, uh, <laughs> that works fine enough. And uh, so I opened this file. We're gonna go into advanced, into image calibration. We're gonna create master frame and we're gonna going to call that dark. And it's going to process that. And we're going to do the same thing for the flat frame. So I'm going to open the flat frame. I'm going to apply the dark frame to the flat frame. Here it is. And then I am going to create the master frame. The flat frame, I created it by centering on the sun, then defocusing, and then taking that. And you can see like there are a bit, a few like dust notes that appear on, uh, on that frame. So. We're gonna do image uh, calibration, create a master frame. We're going to call it flat. And again, it's doing the stacking of all of those 500 frames. And now we can go to the real uh, image file, which is this. And you can see I tried to focus on this area of the sun that looks like it has interesting stuff going on. And there's this kind of like arc or bow or whatever going there that I also thought looked interesting, so I focused on it. Um, so with that said, the image stabilization and anchor looks to be in the right area. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load my dark frame and my, dark, and my flat frame so that I don't forget about them. And uh, then I'm gonna see that I have this set as a surface because it's the surface of the sun, this is not a planet. And we are going to do an analysis of the quality of the frames that we have in there. So that AutoStacker, when it stacks a fraction of the frames that we've taken, knows 
which one are the top quality so it chooses from there from those to uh, to stack so I'm gonna click analyze it's gonna get take a bit of time but once it's done I'll get back to you and here we are we are done so it's basically um, ranked the image by quality meaning basically which images have the highest contrast the least blurry meaning they are least affected by the atmospheric conditions or any movement uh, caused by wind for example during the exposure and what I'm telling AutoStackert here is to to stack just 5% of the available frames. So I really keep to lucky imaging to read really like getting the frames that have the best uh, clarity among uh, all of the frames. What I'm also going to do is I'm gonna set drizzling to 1.5 times because I am using um, a 90 millimeter refractor with a Barlow, uh, two times Barlow, but it's there's still like some undersampling going on. So I should be able to get away with a little bit of drizzling, which is why uh, I'm doing this. And the next step I want to do is to set my alignment points, uh, basically. But the easiest is just I'm going to uh, keep the size of 24 for each alignment point. Click on Place AP Grid. It's going to place my alignment points automatically. And then the only thing left to do is for me to click on Stack. And I'll just click there it's going to be done and I'll get back to you once it's done. Okay, and the, st the stacking is done and let's see, we have a new folder that appeared um, in the same directory as the uh, actual video files that I took and we have in here the uh, result of the stacking and we're going to use a piece of free software called IMPPG which stands for, I have absolutely no idea what it stands for, what the heck did you expect? Whew, that was a long, uh, long acronym. And we're going to open the uh, TIFF file and kind of see what it looks like. So it doesn't look like much right now, but you can see that there seems to be quite a few details around here. I'm not sure whether my scope was tuned properly. I have to say that I still have a lot of trouble with uh, tuning a solar scope um, decently. And I'm just going to go like and select the area around it and uh, open up the tone curve editor. And what I'll want to do is basically play with the histogram. And I want to kind of do something where we're going to invert uh, the image and increase kind of like the contrast on it. And so I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to play around with this uh, curve until I have something that I'm more or less satisfied with. Now with this I've got and um, so now with this I've got something pretty pretty punchy we can see there's quite a bit of, of detail contrast in there I'm kind of kind of like happy with uh, what I'm getting uh, although like uh, I still get like gradients despite the flat frames that I take that's something I'm, I'm still not sure exactly how to deal with in solar imaging the gradients where it's definitely lighter at the bottom left than at the bottom at the top right I'm not sure how to deal with that but meh, one thing at a time so because there seems to be quite a bit of room for sharpening this I'm gonna play with the deconvolution and the unsharp masking amount um, and see how much we can sharpen this image and we can sharpen it a lot oh my word uh, yeah Maybe too much, too much. I want to keep kind of like the softness of it to some extent and we want to prevent ringing. This is pretty cool though. This like all like filaments of plasma, like superheated plasma on the surface of the sun. That's so cool. Um, so yeah, we're getting, we're, we're getting somewhere. And I, I really like what I'm seeing here. And I have to say the post-processing aspect of solar imaging is what like, I just don't know what to do with. Like, I don't know how to really like, do something proper with, uh, with so solar imaging. I, I'm like, kind of like playing with dials until I get something that I like. I wish I could like, make it a bit like, punchier in terms of contrast but I'm not exactly sure how to do that either. Uh, but I like what I'm getting here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to save that as a TIFF file and then we're gonna open it up in PixInsight. 
Okay, and this is the image that I get once I'm in PixInsight. We get like the same issue with, let's say, the, the, the top right corner being a bit weird. And this is, this is actually really neat, really detailed. So I'm going to do a dynamic crop to really center on the area that I, that I enjoy here, that I, that I like seeing. So that's pretty much uh, this. There we are. And then maybe I could try like um, colorizing the image and maybe see like if I want to pump up the contrast. One way to would be to use local histogram equalization on something like a nebula. I wonder like what this would give on solar's Oh, doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's a bit uh, too exaggerated, but I kind of like what uh, what happened there in terms of getting more contrast out of this uh, out of this image? And let's try to play now with uh, some curves. Can still enhance the contrast. And let's see if I can also at the same time try to add color by first going into image color spaces convert to RGB. And then with the preview on, I want to add red, remove some green and more than that, remove a lot of blue. And that gives us like a color that I kind of somewhat sometimes see. Oops. on solar imaging pictures. And someone in an old comment on YouTube actually told me a good method of colorizing the, um, the image. And I have this problem that I cannot find a comment anymore uh, because I feel like while I'm doing that, I'm kind of like losing some details in the color. Sometimes somehow like the uh, enhancing the histogram on the red um, kind of flushes out some of the details because they, they all get like um, moved towards a, a brighter side of the of the spectrum. It's very it's very hard and I have a lot of trouble because that's where it gets kind of artsy, right? And uh, long time viewers of the channel will know I am not an artsy person um, at all. So I always have trouble with that kind of stuff. But like overall, I think this doesn't look too terrible. It's okay, I guess, but uh, yeah, this is what we're gonna go with. But if you have like any, any suggestions or any ideas of how I could improve that, make it a bit more like 3D so that we know what we're looking at, please let me know. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied actually with what, what we're seeing. This was a clutch kind of uh, imaging. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much uh, it for uh, this video. So thank you so much for watching. As always, if you like the channel, if you like this video, you like astrophotography, feel free to go down below, click that like button, leave a comment and subscribe and click on that notification bell, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, but more than that, thank you so much for watching. Uh, whenever you can, don't forget to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.